Let's have a look at these four molecules I've got drawn out here and ask yourself what have they all got in common? That's right, they're all non-polar. Well done. So there's four methane molecules and if you had a mole of methane you wouldn't just have four of these molecules, you'd have Avogadro's number of them, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. But because the molecules are non-polar, there's no overall dipole on them, how do they attract each other? How do these green dotted lines, these intermolecular forces, how can they exist between molecules that have no dipoles? That's what we're going to be looking at in this video. Can't wait. Just going to use this bottle of green water to represent the electron density in a non-polar molecule. So I've got the bottle lying flat at the moment and the, the green water here is evenly distributed. Well actually what you need to appreciate is that in any molecule the electron density is constantly moving around and so if I just move, start that moving the electron density is constantly doing that. So what we've got to appreciate then is if we instantly stop this, so stop this at any instant, I'll, I'll need to tip this up there to show that, then the electron density is either going to be concentrated so let's say more at this side than at that side or if I just tip it the other way it could be more at this side than at this side okay but remember it's constantly just sloshing around the electrons are constantly moving around a molecule like that so with that in mind if we draw a very simple diagram to illustrate that, we could have um, a molecule represented by a circle there, and the electron density, let's say it was at this instant, so the electrons are more on the right hand side, and at that instant we're going to put, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six electrons on that side, and just a couple on that side. So at that instant we have a dipole that would be that way around on this molecule. So this would be called, and this is called, sorry, an instantaneous dipole. So it's at that instant in time. Oops, you can't see the, the full writing there, sorry. Okay, so at that instant. Now imagine if, you know, the, we, we, we move the electrons, keep them moving, and now it flicks to that side, then the instantaneous dipole would be this way around, and now we'd have a delta minus at that end and a delta plus at that end. Okay, so this dipole is constantly flicking backwards and forwards. It's got another name, it's also known as a temporary dipole. because it is not constantly that way or that way, it's, it's moving between the two. Um, and it's also known as a fluctuating dipole. I'll put that at the top. So the dipole is changing backwards and forwards. So what I'm going to do now is, if I bring in a neighbouring molecule, so if you had a mole of this molecule, you would have Avogadro's number of these molecules in the sample. So if I just bring one of them there, another one in there, so this is the neighbouring molecule. I'll just bring that into position so you can see that better. So what effect will this instantaneous dipole have on the electrons that are sloshing around in this molecule. Well, we've got a slightly negative end here. The negative electrons will be repelled, so they'll be pushed that way. And so it puts up it puts a dipole into the neighbouring molecule, so again that end would be slightly negative, 
and this end would be slightly positive. Now, because this dipole's been forced, we call this an induced dipole. So we have two types of dipoles. We have the instantaneous one and the induced one. Now what you can see is that the two molecules now, we have a slightly negative end of one molecule next to a slightly positive end of another molecule. And so we get an attraction. So that blue dotted line there is to represent the attraction between the two molecules and that is what we call a van de Waals force. So lowercase v, lowercase d, uppercase w, van de Waals force. And if we consider the dipole when it's um, fluctuated to the other side, then it's obvious that, that this dipole here would just flip round the other way and you would still have I'll squeeze that on there so this slightly positive end now would attract the electrons across one, two, so let's put a few there not so many there delta plus delta minus you've still got opposite ends of the dipoles next to each other and so you get the attractive force there so there's your van der Waals force always between these molecules so this is the type, this is the weakest type of intermolecular force and it occurs between non-polar molecules. So if I just move the camera so you can see everything. So we've got our fluctuating dipole due to the electron density being uneven at any point in time. Instantaneous at that instant in time. Or temporary because it's not permanently this way you can see on these two red diagrams it's moving backwards and forwards then the neighbouring molecule will be affected and it will have a dipole induced dipole again constantly flicking backwards and forwards and so the, di the, the other dipole mirrors that but you've always got this attraction between and so you've got this van der Waals force always be between and the only other thing you need to know is that as the number of electrons increase in the molecules, the van der Waals forces become stronger. So a great example of that is in group 7. So you have these non-polar molecules, F2, Cl2, Br2 and I2. So these are all non-polar molecules. So they have these van der Waals forces between them. The physical state of fluorine at room temperature and pressure is a gas. Chlorine's also a gas. Bromine's a liquid and iodine's a solid. So what's happening there is the boiling point of these molecules, these halogen molecules, is increasing. That's got the least number of electrons in its molecules. It has the weakest van der Waals force between the molecules and therefore it has the lowest boiling point. Iodine's got the most electrons in these, out of these molecules. It has the strongest van der Waals forces between its molecules and that's represented with a high boiling point and therefore it's a solid at room temperature and pressure.